It's your power, isn't it? Hello and welcome to another Hot Rods to Review. Today I will be reviewing the second season of the anime series My Hero Academia. I first watched this series a while ago and I had nothing but fond memories of this season. For this review, I rewatched the series and I read the corresponding chapters in the manga because I've always been interested in reading the manga for this series. This season adapted three arcs from the manga. The UA Sports Festival arc, the Versus Hero Killer arc, and the final exams arc. These arcs were very interesting to say the least. This season picks up right where the previous season left off, and it goes right into a tournament arc. This sports festival was very important for Deku because he had to make himself known so that others could see him as a potential symbol of peace. The UA sports festival arc was my favorite arc of this season. And that says a lot because it was followed by another extremely well-written arc. A lot of new characters were introduced and I got to learn so much more about the world this show takes place in. Like the existence of another hero class, Class 1B. In the existence of a reserve course, support course, and a business course. These other courses really drive home the fact that society is really centered on the existence of heroes. I really like the character Mei Hatsume from the support course. She was the only really member from the support course that we got to see so far, but I believe that she was enough because she showcased so many inventions. Showcasing her inventions added some cool world building to the series and it gave an explanation as to how heroes and the students got such advanced customized costumes. The standout from the support course was Satoshi Shinsho. I loved him because he had some parallels to Deku. While he was never quirkless like Deku, his entire life people have basically been telling him that he cannot be a hero due to the weird nature of his quirk. I could only imagine the gut punch he received when he found out that the entrance exam was something impossible for him to pass because his quirk wouldn't be able to help him fight against those robots. While his time on screen was brief, he definitely caught my eye. I know he returns in season 5, but I haven't watched it yet, so I will be excited to see him come back. But the main focus of the UA Sports Festival was on Shoto and Deku. At the beginning, it was like they were fighting a proxy war for All Might and Endeavor, with Shoto representing Endeavor and Deku representing All Might. There are even scenes that contrast Endeavor and All Might's conversation with Shoto and Deku's. And there's even some contrast with Deku's conversations with Endeavor and Shoto's conversations with All Might. Endeavor tries to be controlling of Deku, while All Might gives Shoto his space to process his own thoughts and feelings. Eventually, Deku told Endeavor that he wasn't All Might, and Shoto isn't him. Their conversation let me know that Deku wasn't going to let Endeavor use him or Shoto, and that nothing will be able to stop them from achieving their dreams. The story's focus on Shoto also added to the world building, because that is where I learned about quirk marriages. Since arranged marriages are a real thing today, it completely makes sense that someone would abuse that system to pass on powerful quirks to their offspring in this world. Learning about how Endeavor forced Shoto's mother to marry him for the sole purpose of producing offspring was very sad. I was immediately able to empathize with Shoto and I understood why he wouldn't want to use the fire side of his quirk. That is why it was so cool when Deku made Shoto remember that although he inherited his abilities from his father, it was still his own quirk and he could still be his own hero, separate from his father. At the beginning of the tournament, All Might was worried that his kindness would make Deku lose the tournament, and he was correct. It was only because Midoriya wanted to save Shoto that he gave up a huge advantage, Shoto only using 50% of his power. Instead of becoming the champion of the UA Sports Festival, he decided to be a hero and save Shoto by reminding him that his power is his alone and no one else's. The final clash between Midoriya and Shoto was definitely my favorite scene of this season. The animation was stellar and the theme song Yusei Run was playing. It was just magnificent. I could be wrong, but I think this is also the first time I've seen Deku give it his all and still lose but it didn't even matter that he had lost, since he was successful at saving Shoto. Shoto is one of my favorite characters this season, 
In this arc, he developed from a bland, overpowered background character to a really well-developed, overpowered main character. I wish I really could have seen more of Shoto's interactions with his mother, but it is clear to me that he has now completely accepted himself. Not only did I see him use his fireside in the Hero Killer arc, but I also noticed that he changed costumes. My first time watching it, I honestly didn't even notice because it looked very similar to the UA gym costume. But in the manga, it stood out more because there was an entire page in Volume 7 talking about his new costume's features. His new features let me know that he has completely embraced the fire half of his quirk. The UA Sports Festival arc led into the next one really well by introducing the hero killer and giving Tenya motivation to capture him. Midoriya, on the other hand, had motivation to improve his usage of One For All, and we would get introduced to Gran Torino, who is a pretty lovable old dude who knows about Deku's quirk. Stain the Hero Killer was such a cool character. Of all of the villains in the show, he is my favorite thus far. Like me and most people watching the show, he has an idea of what a hero should be. Heroes save people out of the kindness of their hearts and expect nothing in return. The fact that someone could be motivated by money and still be considered a hero disgusts him. His character really shed some light on the pros and cons of the hero world. Because while the term hero has been tainted, people are still getting saved. During the Stain fight, the show cuts to Endeavor's battle against the Nomus. When I first watched, I wondered what the purpose of this transition was. Now I know that Horikoshi was attempting to convey that even the worst person can save lives. The previous arc spent an extensive amount of time communicating that Endeavor is a horrible father and even worse husband. He doesn't care about anything other than his own fame and glory. Yet if he were not a hero, many innocents would have been killed by the Nomus. But on the other hand, I do understand Stain's point of view. On what I first learned last season, that there are people who only care about the fame and the money that were heroes, I was just shocked. As someone who consumes a lot of superhero media, I know that heroes are supposed to be those who feel like they have a duty to help others, like All Might and Deku. I can honestly kind of understand why the current hero system would drive someone crazy. At the end of the arc, I saw that Deku, Shoto, and Tenya almost got in trouble for doing nothing but acting heroically. That last part really drove home Stain's point that society was forgetting what true heroism is. The Versus Hero Killer arc is definitely one of the best arcs in the series thus far, and I would say that it is the best of the season, but I think that I like the UA Sports Festival arc a tad more. The last and shortest arc of the season was the Final Exams arc. This was a pretty good arc, it was just not as good as the two before it. I really liked how we got to see some development from the side characters like Momo. From all the hype of the previous arcs, I hadn't even noticed that she was less confident in her own ability. But seeing her regain her confidence and catching Aizawa-sensei was very cool. I also loved seeing Mineta go against Midnight. Horikoshi consistently surprises me with how good Mineta's quirk is. He is shown using his quirk in such creative ways not only in this arc, but during the UA Sports Festival as well. Obviously the highlight of this arc was the All Might vs Deku and Bakugo fight. It was where I first learned that Deku had always admired Bakugo for his tenacity despite the fact that he got bullied by him a lot. We also saw some heroism from Deku as he would rather save Bakugo than to pass the practical exam. It just built on his character more and it built his relationship with Bakugo more. The arc ended with Deku encountering Tomura Shigaraki at the mall and their conversation just let me know that there is so much more to the story of My Hero Academia. I'm very curious to see if he'll be a villain as interesting as Stain or if he will be a whack villain. Only time will tell. Before I move on to my criticisms, I want to briefly mention the music of the season. I really liked both the openings for this season, but I definitely enjoyed Peace Sign more. kind of hard to explain, but it just gives off more of a hero vibe. It starts slow, then it picks up while showing visuals of epic quirk usage. It is definitely one of my favorites in the entirety of My Hero Academia.
I don't really have much to criticize about this season. It is honestly my favorite season of the show so far and I've watched up to season 4. Despite that, I still do have a couple of criticisms of this season and two of them are injury related. When Deku was hospitalized after he and Shoto had their final clash, Recovery Girl told him that he had permanent damage to his hand. Now I personally think that it is cool to have permanent damage wounds that the protagonist can see and reflect on their past mistakes. But I do believe this injury was over exaggerated. I don't know the exact quote but she was saying stuff like, it will never move the same again. However, I didn't see Deku having any problems punching Stain with his busted up hands. It just seems like that was a dramatic piece of information that won't impact the story much moving forward. And I know it's kind of brought back up in season 3, but Deku still does use his hands to punch stuff, so it just feels like it's kind of artificial tension. Speaking of artificial tension, the Versus Hero Killer arc started off in a very dramatic way as well. When Midoriya and Tenya went their separate ways for their internships, Midoriya narrated, when I first watched that part, I was very intrigued, and I thought that something really bad was going to happen like a permanent injury or a death or somebody getting kicked out of UA. Now watching this back, I think that the quote was alluding to Tenya damaging his arm. That is mostly disappointing because it just didn't even reach my standards. I was thinking something more along the lines of completely losing an arm, but in Tenya's case, it probably would have been worse had he lost a leg. To make matters worse, his arm can be healed if he has nerve surgery, and he's super rich, so I don't really see a reason for Deku to regret what happened on that day. I mean, it's kind of bad, but it's not bad enough to narrate feelings of regret over at the beginning of the arc. And speaking on the Stain incident, I feel like we also didn't get enough time with the character. The anime and manga did narrate a bit of his backstory, but it was pretty vague. I just think that if there was an entire episode dedicated to telling his origin story, then I would have understood him more and I would have felt more sympathy for him. Needless to say, I still believe that Stain is an incredible villain and he is still my favorite of the entire series. Overall, I believe that the second season of My Hero Academia is even better than the first. Honestly, when I first watched this show, I thought that the first season was better since people kept overhyping the second season. Now that I have rewatched both with a more fresh perspective, I can now say that there is so much more to enjoy about the second season. There's also so much I didn't even talk about, like Tenya and Araraka's character development. But I will definitely make some character analysis of videos about them in the future. I'm honestly enjoying this rewatch so far and I can't wait to see what's in store for Deku next season. <laughs> Thank you for watching my video. Be sure to leave a like into Delaware, smash that subscribe button to see more My Hero Academia content on this channel. And let me know what you thought about this season in the comment section down below. I'll see you in the next slide. Peace out.